Look, I don't care what you say. I'm not gonna change my mind. Hot dogs are better than salad. Hot they do are dogs are categorically not uh, delicious is better and for you. more easy to find than salad. The salad, you gotta Can go I find the greens. You can't find Fresh the greens. We're in the wasteland. The for hot dogs, the meat salad. is hot everywhere dogs and it's better. delicious. What the hell is that? That's my phone. You have a phone? What the fuck? Hello? But the phone's not for me? No, I'm not busy. What do you mean you're Hold not on. busy? Matt, please, I wanna call. What the fuck is Sorry happening? Sorry about that. Yeah? I'll be there soon. Be where? Bye. What the hell was that? I have to go. Go? Go where? Who the hell was that? I'll explain later. See you in about an hour. Okay, I guess I'll just hang out with uh, the Novak Dinosaur. Famous Novak Dinosaur. I'm here. At long last. It's finally happened. Horse fans and Fallout fans. Today we are united! Hello, my name is Hunter, the movie reviewing horse, because when it comes to cinema, humans cannot be trusted. And I'm Mike, from the longest running show on this channel, that's mine. And I am also not fond of Yaogwai. Feral Ghoul Reavers. Wait, really? Just Reavers? I'm from DC. Trust me, they're worse. Fallout is woven into the DNA of Hedator Productions. You can't go anywhere on this channel or anything else that we do without running into Fallout. It all eventually comes back to Fallout. We have done Let's Plays, we have done live streams, we have done fanfics. We have our ever-popular Fallout Equestria webcomic, Comet Trails. And the longest-running Fallout YouTube series of all time, that's mine. Yeah, I was getting to that, but that's like, the really big one. Matt's Mine is not just the longest-running show on this channel, it's also the longest-running Fallout YouTube series in the world. Yeah, Fallout runs very, very deep around here, and I'm not sure a lot of people understand just how deep it goes. Those three sound effects are on every single video, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot escape it. And it doesn't just stop with us, because Fallout is a cultural phenomenon. It's a ridiculously popular series with its own tabletop game, fan meetups, cosplays, and we're just getting warmed up. I mean, look at all the stuff I have. This one's the uh, 3D printed Fallout 4 10 millimeter pistol. Pretty nice. Laser pistol. This one's just foam, so nothing too tremendously special about that. This is a 100% genuine Pip-Boy. Uh, it's the one that you could put your phone in, so... Uh, Particularly proud about that one. This was a genuine soda that uh, you had to order from Europe. This is the absolutely enormous one-to-one -one scale plasma rifle. Uh, I use this for cosplaying. It's pretty nice. This is said cosplay. It's a Vault 111 jumpsuit. This is actually the second one. The first one didn't fit anymore. This is a bomb, and I can promise you the batteries are dead. Custom-made Fallout 3 hand grenades signed by, uh, the person who wrote Fallout Equestria Project Horizons. I have many, many bottle caps. A lot of these I use for cosplaying purpose. I don't know how that got in there. I got a few stim packs for cosplay purposes, but these break really, really easily. Genuine, real Jones Soda Nuka-Cola Quantum with a little bit of Quantum still left in there. Extremely drunk vault boy. 
Nuka World Coffee Cup. Actual God Forsaken Funko Pop. This guy, I have no idea where he came from. Another one I don't remember where he came from, but he's here. Enough NCR bills to uh, slap someone in the face and have it be satisfying. This is my actual real honest to God everyday notebook. Hunter Reviews would not exist without this book. It's a formidable collection, but are we going to talk about the Sandra body pillow back there? No. No, we are not. But Dungeons and Door Kids will eventually get a Fallout pen and paper campaign. We're going to Philadelphia, by the way. Fallout is everywhere. Fallout is everywhere. And now it's on TV. They announced this show four years ago, July 2020, back when we were all still in lockdown. But apparently Todd Howard had been approached about making a TV show since Fallout 3 in 2008. But apparently he felt, quote, none of the suggestions met his vision of the Fallout series, which I can actually totally understand. This one time, famous writer of the Metro books, Dmitry Glukovsky, got approached about a Metro adaptation, and they wanted to have it in the DC Metro. The DC Metro! Like, okay, hold the phone. No. I have been through the DC Metro both in Fallout 3 and in real life. You don't want to put it in the DC Metro. Pete Hines from Bethesda also chimed in when they were approached about making a TV show, and he said, no, that could also be a disaster. Check Doom 2005 for examples of a bad adaptation. 08 was a different time. We were busy electing a black president, the economy was bad, and video game adaptations were still really, really terrible. They didn't actually start getting any effort put into them until, I would say, the Ratchet and Clank movie. And even then, that was still pretty bad. I love that movie. Many, many other people did not love that movie. The idea of the Fallout show kind of floated around for a while until Jonathan Nolan approached Bethesda with his idea for a Fallout show. Noland has actually played the games, and he also made Westworld, so he has a bit of a reputation. And Todd Howard was actually on board with this adaptation, except he wanted to keep it on a very, very short leash. Or, well, I should say Todd wanted to be heavily involved, which he was. In fact, I have never actually seen a video game adaptation where the creators of the video game were this heavily involved. So much so that Todd Howard actually signed off on this being canon to the series. It takes place in 2296. It's the new latest point in the timeline. So they brought Lisa Joy in as co-director and this dream team got to work. In your expert opinion, how did we do? Well... It exploded. It was very apparent, very early that we didn't have to worry about this making its money back when it actually attracted five million new players in a single day. Fallout 76 has actually never been this popular. And not to mention, Fallout 4 sales are up 1700%. Nice. Yeah, yeah it is. We haven't actually seen anything like this since the Lego movie, and that accelerated Lego to be the biggest toy manufacturer on the planet. And a lot of that can actually be chalked up to a really good marketing campaign. Look at the trailer! The trailer looks great! Boom! Power armor. Bam! The Pridwin is back. Boom! Vertibirds. Kablam! Ghouls! Yeah, the trailer kicked ass. Not at all reflected by the show itself, which opens real quiet-like. Real, real subtle at a little kid's birthday party right before the end of the fucking everything. And then cutting to a mere 200 plus years later. 
In fact, this is one of those shows I like to call unapologetically insane. How do you mean? Like Omni-Man slamming his son through a train. For the boys. Which is fitting because this is made by the same studio. This unapologetically insane attitude is backed up by a ton of blood, tons of violence, excessive use of the word fuck, and our three main characters. Starting with Lucy, the hopeful vault dweller who is way too hopeful that the violence is going to end anytime soon. Which is ironic because raiders infiltrate the vault after they infiltrated another vault which is, connect which is connected to this vault, but there's also a third vault. Uh... Okay, this vault experiment is a little complicated. Okay, but this might be important. It's complicated. Well, well, I think you still need to explain it. Spoilers. Okay, now we're speaking the same language. Regardless, the raiders get into Vault 32, and then they start raiding Vault 33, and then her dad gets kidnapped. Because one thing you need to know about Fallout is that it's a bit of a dad stravaganza. Fallout 3, you spent a huge swath of that game trying to find your dad, who's voiced by none other than Liam Neeson. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Fallout 4, you play this guy, who is dad, and has to go find his son. I have to get out! I have to find my son! Uh, alternatively, you can play as the mom, though. Oh, but hey, your son is named father in that. Because dads are everywhere in Fallout. There's one here, too. We've kind of circled back around to we have to find the dad again. To balance out all the dadening we're gonna do, they brought in this guy. His name is Maximus. Not his original name. He's a member of the Brotherhood of Steel. They all have dumb names. Maxie's trying to find his place in the Brotherhood, but he's having a hard time climbing that ladder. He's not very good at much. He keeps getting beaten up by the kids at school. His friend got promoted instead of him, and he just really wants to wear that T-60 power armor because it's the best looking power armor. This one time, somebody showed him an X1, and he was like, Oh! Oh god! Oh god! What is that? What is that? Oh! Oh god! Oh god! Get that out of my face! It's ugly! I don't care if its stats are better, it's ugly! You clearly have a type. Yes, yes I do. Maximus does get promoted to Squire before the end of the episode, though. Someone put razor blades in his friend's foot. And you can't haul around this giant golf bag-looking things when you got razor blades in your foot. What the hell even is this thing? But nothing, nothing prepares you for the greatest plot twist of them all. Ghoul dad. Because you see, this guy is actually this guy. Because ghouls live for a disgustingly long time. Which sounds like a pretty good deal. Until you realize that he has outlived all of his friends and everyone that he's ever known and loved before. And now, all he has left is two centuries of witnessing the decay and the destruction and the depression that is the current state of the world that you once loved. So this guy's obviously got some trauma. Walton Goggins plays an extremely great character here. In fact, he might just be my favorite. It's just a shame that we didn't get him until the very end of the first episode. We did get those vertebrates, though, because the Brotherhood is going out to hunt down this Enclave guy, because the Enclave is still hanging on somehow, despite the fact that we have blown them up over and over and over again. Oh, but don't worry, this guy's different. This guy has dog meat. Nobody ever said dog meat. And yet, that's clearly what is being implied here. Officially, Dr. Wilzig's dog is named CX404, but it's 
obviously Dogmeat. Dogmeat has appeared in every major Fallout media, including Fallout 1 and 2 and Fallout 3, Fallout 4 and 5, Fallout 6, Fallout 7, Fallout 18, Billion, and 11. I'm sorry, I don't know where I was going with that. Either way, I think this is an all-around way of saying this was a really good first episode. Not just because of the fantastic acting and the fantastic effects, but also the godlike set design. A while back, we did see leaked photos of the sets they made for the vault, which looked absolutely amazing, but we did not expect them to make the wasteland look this good. Even if there are more trees than I'd like. But I think at this point, it's been 220 some odd years, so, uh... Yeah, let the trees grow back at this point. I mean, come on! They went all the way to Namibia to get some of these shots. That takes dedication! You see, there's a town out there called Colmenskop. Pretty sure I pronounced that correctly. It's a real place. You can go there if you really, really wanted to. It's this completely abandoned town. In a world where most of the stuff we see on screen is fake, it's refreshing to know that most of the stuff in these shots is real. Like this shipwreck. That's real. James May, Jeremy Clarkson, and Richard Hammond drove by it in the Grand Tour. Episode 2 opens up with the Enclave, which is a faction that has been destroyed again and again and again, but is still somehow hanging around. Their latest scheme involves dogs and blue things. I mean, I guess it's better than ranting about power armor. You are out of uniform, soldier! Where is your power armor?! So as far as I can tell, the Enclave can't afford power armor anymore, and this doesn't sit well with Dr. Wilzig here, who kills his colleague, takes the dog, and escapes. Or maybe it has something to do with the blue thing he put in his neck. Either way, Enclave armor is ugly. Ugh! It's like the ugliest power armor! POWER ARMOR! Oh, but they do meet up with Lucy, where they have a delightful, albeit creepy, conversation. Vault dwellers are an endangered species here. You come from a world of rules, of laws. This place is indifferent to all of that. Ultimately, their conversation leads to more questions than answers, much like a bunch of other things that have been happening in this show. The next day, the Brotherhood stumbles upon their campsite, and thankfully, they brought real power armor. POWER ARMOR! Unfortunately, T-60 power armor is not enough to stand up against bears, as indicated by... <laughs> I, I, by I, the fact that I think this is the most someone has ever sworn in any show I've ever watched. And finally, after about an eternity, Maximus shoots it. Once. In the head. That bear went down way faster than any Yao Guai I've ever seen. Bears. Okay, seriously though, these things are bullet magnets. How the hell did he take one down with a well-placed headshot? You stupid motherfucker, you know this is all your fault. You know what they do to squires that don't do their fucking job? They string you up. So we've gone from pleasant, albeit creepy, conversations just to threatening conversations. Buddy, I'm not sure this is the conversation you want to be having with the guy who's holding your stim packs. Your life hangs in the balance. <laughs> and I think Maximus realizes this. He has a moral obligation to assist his knight. Yes. Although, on the other hand... Power armor. Tells the biggest lies with the loudest eyes. It's a man. If it walks. If it talks. If its habits are a little bit peculiar. If it brags and tries to make you think it's wonderful. POWER ARMOR! And then there's some seed about this guy who's fucking chickens? I think I was fucking my chickens. 
Yeah, you thought I was joking about that, weren't you? By the way, his T-60 power armor has these jet boosters, so that's new! Lucy, meanwhile, is off talking to strangers, but does finally make it to a small town called Philly. Wait, Philly as in Philadelphia, or... Oh, Philly as in Little Horse. Okay, that's confusing. East Coaster thought we were going to Philadelphia. I was very confused because we're in California. Tell me about it. It's here in Philly that we get to see all kinds of colorful characters and this less than helpful shopkeeper. We vault dwellers recognize uh, and are grateful for the privileged position we were born into. And you know what folks up here say about the vaults? What? Fuck the vault. There's such nice people up here, I, I swear to fucking god. It's around now that old Doc Enclave shows up, and him and Lucy run into each other. But that's not all we run into. Happen to be a doctor, would you? Ghoul Dad! Cats in the cradle. You see, these guys from the previous episode initially dug him out of the ground to help him find this guy because he's got this huge bounty on his head. And when bounties are involved, violence usually follows. Naturally, it is time to shoot the shit out of everything in sight! What's gotten into you? That gun! That fucking gun! <laughs> right off you one of these cherry tomatoes, but you got a hole in your neck. I've often talked about adaptations trying to tone down the violence. That's clearly not happening here. Starting to think that Ratchet and Clank adaptation was the exception, not the rule. After all, you don't really want to tone down the violence for an adaptation for a game that has something called the Bloody Mess Perk. <laughs> Meanwhile, with a gun battle going on outside, Lucy's getting information on Moldaver. The person who attacked the vault. I realize we've been very bad with names in this review. You can see, it turns out everybody wants this guy. Good old Dr. Enclave. Not helping your case. I did that one intentionally. Mole Daver wants Dr. Enclave. Ghoul Dad here also wants Dr. Enclave. But also, Maximus also really wants Dr. Enclave. Nine Titus of the Brotherhood of Steel, stand down or be cut down. You gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> okay. Okay, the, the, the show's got a sense of humor. This show can be really funny at times, like when Lucy walks out and tries to stop this guy who just gunned down 10 to 15 people with, with... With... What even is this thing? It's this stupid little tranquilizer gun. She had this back in the vault, too. Like, they, she pulled it out of an armory. Why would you not go for a real gun? Well, now that is a very small drop in a very, very large bucket of drugs. Right, so somewhere in this scene, Doc Enclave got his leg blown off. Ghoul Dad stabbed the dog and the... Wait, wait, what? Murder this guy. What? No, come on! Learn to aim, you idiot! Go hand to hand. How's your hand to hand? Y you got a good on arm skill going? D no. D d go fat that. See? God. Man. 
Making the whole power armor look bad. Oh, by the way, there's this really heartfelt scene between Maximus and Lucy right before we start beating the shit out of Ghoul Dad, and I did not know the visor flipped up like that. Frankly, I'm not sure the Bethesda devs knew that it did that either. So, while this is all going on outside, Dr. Wilsig desperately needs a new leg. Which is unfortunate because we don't have any legs, so we have to settle for this thing. Frankly, I'm not sure what this is either. I guess it's some kind of prosthetic, but I've never seen it in-game. And now it's up to Lucy to get this guy to Moldaver. Because everyone wants this guy, but mostly Moldaver. Legs can be grown back though. What? No, they can't. There are ways. Cures for pain. Uh, foot healing zero. Cures that will make you grow an entire new foot. For starters, ask that by. Isn't that the dude who was fucking chickens earlier? Meanwhile, Maximus gets his foot stuck. Oh, God. Damn it. Rule number one. Read the manual. <laughs> this is incredibly disappointing, me being your standard power armor enjoyer. This is literally one of those situations where, like, you're in a tank and he's not. I'm in a tank hey. and you're not! My disappointment is immeasurable. And, and my day is ruined. So while Maximus is out making my favorite suit of power armor look bad, Ghoul Dad does in fact save the dog, and they're both off to find Lucy, who, meanwhile, is still heading towards Moldover, but Wilzig is bleeding out. Because that is what happens when you get a prosthetic leg attached in the back of a shack by a crazy lady. No, you see, I've just taken a cyanide pill. What? The vault Tech Plan D. It was the most humane product that vault Tech ever made. It was quick, painless, tasted like banana. I, I was surprised it wasn't more popular. Oh. Also, I hate banana, so, uh... Speaking of vault Tech, Wilsig knows an awful lot about vault Tech, Probably because the Enclave has deep, deep ties to vault Tech, but that's just me. I don't know, shady government organization has deep ties to shady government organization? You can change the future if you can bring me to Moldaver. But how am I gonna bring you if you're... You know, not, not my whole body. Uh, just my head. Yeah, oh yeah. Lucy's having a really great day. And look, he even brought a ripper. It's like a little chainsaw sword. So he dies and that is the end of episode two. And that's where the credits roll. Episode 3 is when we start getting into what I would like to call non-wasteland related stuff. Remember that guy from the very beginning of the show with the scene with the bombs dropping? Yeah. He's a movie star, apparently. This here is Cooper Howard. So, what, you took both of our last names and stuck them together? And this here is his beautiful wife. So it's an interracial couple. All right, cool. Anyway, Howard here has been approached with a promotional opportunity of sorts, which they will get back to at the end of the episode. Because for now, we have to get back to ghouls, decapitations, dogs, and drugs. Oh, and uh, the vault, because uh, yeah. 
We forgot there was an entire vault that we also have to focus on in this show. And also, Lucy's brother Norm! No! He's been a character this whole time! We just haven't talked about him in this review because they haven't really focused on the vault until this episode. Like I said, non-wasteland stuff. And actually, this stuff is balanced in pretty good. I don't really have that much to complain about here, despite the fact that this is an issue that's been coming up a lot lately. Shows and movies will introduce a subplot that we don't care about and we just want them to go back to the main plot. That isn't really happening here. Unlike, uh, I think the best example of this would be Sonic 2, where we're running around with Sonic, and then we have to skip over to the 45-minute subplot of them at a boring wedding in Hawaii. Nobody is interested in the boring Hawaii wedding subplot. I am interested in the vault subplot. Because this is a really good thing to focus your subplot on. Vaults were always sort of this nefarious thing in Fallout lore. Because nine times out of ten, there's always something shady going on behind the scenes. The door doesn't work properly, we put a cougar in this one, this one's just one guy in a crate full of puppets. One man and 999 women. Nice. There's one where they had to sacrifice someone every year, that's a real one. Vault life is like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're gonna get. Gary! In Vault 33, where we are right now, is directly linked to Vault 32 and 31. And none of the other vaults were linked together. Our vault subplot doesn't just focus on Norm, by the way. There's also his friend Chet, who I'm going to call Tall Man because... Jesus Christ! The whole opening the vault door for Lucy Zing didn't sit too well with the council, so... I guess I'm not gatekeeper anymore. Norm is less than enthusiastic about being reprimanded by this... Council, if you could call it that. Yeah, believe me, they picked a real bunch of goobers to run this place. Norm is reassigned to feed the prisoners, because, yes, some of the people who attacked the vault actually survived and weren't immediately killed. A decision that will baffle television viewers for years to come. We can do what they would have done us. Wow. Jeez, the what? No! Don't shoot that down! That's a sensible plan! He says what we are all thinking. That is- that is exactly what we were all thinking! And the whole fault is against this idea, except for the blonde lady who got stabbed in the eye with a fork. Probably because they stabbed her in the eye with a fork. They're actually trying to find ways to integrate these people into their vault society. Oh, how... Horrible! Do you guys not have guns? Probably not, because the only one I actually saw them use was that stupid tranquilizer thing. Oh, by the way, this guy walks in and uh, the water chip broke. Now they're running out of water. This doesn't come up again for the rest of the season, and I don't know why. Meanwhile, topside, Lucy's alone with the good doctor's head. Just, just, just the head. And she does the sensible thing and actually puts a tracker in it. Maximus has to repair his power armor and he gets the shit kicked out of him before he crushes this dude's head. It's real cool. Power armor! Oh, and it's right around now that the- Oh, ring ring. What's that? Who's calling? The consequences of our actions? Yeah, the Brotherhood wants to know why Maximus or his knight haven't reported in. His knight, who is dead, by the way. Maximus didn't tell anybody this. We were attacked. Huh. By an abomination. My squire, he fell in battle. He died with honor. And glory. This is the plan? Yep, lie. Lie until you cannot lie anymore. Everything will work out in the end. Like when the Brotherhood airdrop him this schmuck-looking squire. Look at this schmuck. We saw this schmuck earlier, but now he looks even more like a schmuck. 
And as we can see here, those intrusive thoughts are getting into Maximus's head. Just... It would be so easy to crush his head and make this problem go away. Arise, my square. And clean this. Gone mad with my moderate amount of power! We're not the only ones in search of this remnant from the old world. The other cleric says, whoever gets the target will control the wasteland. A statement that's not ominous, creepy, or foreboding at all. Meanwhile, Lucy's hanging out with a deer. Not even an irradiated deer, it's just a totally normal deer, which is surprising out here. That is until she's very rudely interrupted by- Oh, God. What the hell is even that? Before we can figure that out, though, it steals the head and retreats back into the water when we are once again rudely interrupted by... Ghoul Dad. Go put got it on. For the record, I don't know why streaming services feel the need to fade to black like that. Commercial break. Uh, it's streaming. Why would they put ads in streaming? Aren't these streaming services stealing enough money from people as it is? No. Meanwhile, back at the site of the decapitation... I think this was him? Hard to tell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's... that's definitely him. Think we should, uh, bring the body back with us? No. If they left the body, it must be worthless. His head is what's valuable. We need to find it. Oh, yeah, smart. Who do you think did this, the girl or the ghoul? The ghoul? Definitely. <laughs> So, we've established that our Brotherhood boys are one step behind on everything. Probably because they stopped to look for apples. Maximus still going mad with his moderate amount of power, and not just because he's wearing power armor. Power Meanwhile, Ghoul Dad is basically waterboarding Lucy. It's kind of funny, too, because he gives this great big speech about how torture doesn't do anything. Torture person don't do shit. Then why... Why are you doing this? Well, I ain't torturing you, sweetheart. I'm using you as bait. And this requires her to be face down in the irradiated water. I mean, no one said it didn't have to be fun. So, this works, and they manage to fight the gopher off again. They don't get the head, but these little vile things get smashed when Lucy throws these... What are those, saddlebags? Into its mouth, and these vials... He needs these vials. I don't know why. We're now in the realm of... Bullshit that the show came up with. Because I've been going off of my knowledge from the games this whole time, and I have no idea what these things are. That's the thing about this show. This is canon. They said a million times that this is canon. It's actually the new latest point in the timeline. So I figured coming into the show straight from the games, I wouldn't get lost. What the hell are these things? I get that we're not gonna completely go off the games. We're gonna come up with some new stuff. But could you at least give us like, I don't know, some pointers, a few hints, maybe a flashback segment, an explanation, something? There's nothing particularly wrong about it. I just found it a bit odd. How do we see how these two are doing? Fuck! That good, huh? You can't treat people like this! Yeah, why is that? Because of the golden rule. Do unto others as you'd have done unto you. Oh, that is just adorable. How so? You know, in the sense of, uh, it's like the garbage they spoon-feed you at school. Uh, oh yes, you can, when you grow up, you can be whatever you want to be. Where are we going? What about the head? I need the head to get my dad yeah, back. Yeah, well, the wasteland's got its own golden rule. No, oh, what's that? Thou shalt get sidetracked by bullshit every goddamn time. <laughs> what about the dog? He ain't mine. Hmm. That's a great line. 
I mean, it's true. Oh, yeah. Like the time that you went out looking for a squad of Lost Brotherhood guys, found a building that didn't have any connector roads, went inside, discovered a bunch of ghosts, found hollow tapes from a guy who was also looking for his dad, by the way, and you discovered the evil ancient pillar in the basement. Well, that's an extreme case, but yes. Meanwhile, our Brotherhood boys are busy falling behind, but they do eventually make it to the lake. Or river. I'm not entirely sure what it is. Their fight scene with the Gulper is a thousand times more entertaining, and is actually a thousand times more successful. Is that... The head. All right, yeah, now, can we do the voice critical thing, actually? Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! That's what it's all about! Episode isn't quite over, though, because it turns out that dipping your face in an irradiated river, or lake, or whatever, is not very good for your health. And Ghoul Dad shoots the face off this vault tech billboard. Because it turns out he, Cooper Howard, is the vault guy! I don't know if he's this vault guy, because, I mean, this one's blonde and he's not, but either way, he is the vault guy. The thumbs up. He came up with that. In fact, that's where they end the episode. Episode 4 opens with us heading over to Westside Medical Clinic, where we meet this guy. His name is Roger, and he's trying very, very hard to remember that fact. So you can tell that <laughs> old Roger here is losing it. We're slowly learning that they need these little vials to keep themselves from going insane. Or feral, as it's called in the game where they're fucking everywhere and we've never heard of these things. It's infuriating enough that Ghoul Dad blows his brains out. Though, well, honestly, with the way he was going, he probably did him a favor. Meanwhile, Vault Life isn't all it's cracked up to be either. Much like this guy, who has refused to crack during the interrogations. Oh, but hey, look! Norm is back. <laughs> Norm is down because his entire family is gone, and while everyone was taking up arms to fight the raiders, he hid under the floorboards. No, like, literally, that he hid under the floorboards. They may, were made of metal, but they're floorboards. People here are hurting. Disoriented. And with your sister gone, you're the last standing McLean. Your voice carries more weight than you might realize. Slowly but surely, Norm here is becoming a real character. He was sort of cast aside at the beginning of the show, but with each of these scenes, he's slowly becoming more interesting. The same thing is happening here with Lucy, though it's more indirect because she's getting it from Ghoul Dad. It's a much more hands-off approach to the learning experience, like, nobody cares about your feelings, you need to stop giving a shit where the water comes from, you need to stop running away from me, if it happens again, I'm gonna take one of your fingers, oh, okay, fine, I'm just gonna take one of your fingers anyway then. <laughs> this is a real scene. You know what? We haven't figured out what's going on with Tall Man lately. What's going on with Tall Man? Oh, I see. He's shacking up with Eye Patch Lady. He gets a cool sweater out of the deal. And a scarf. And before I can question the practicality of a scarf in an underground bomb shelter, her water breaks. Oh boy! The miracle of birth is a beautiful thing. Yeah, but I don't think we could show that on TV. I think what we need right now is some ominous dialogue to save us from this extremely awkward situation. I don't know what the people of Vault 32 were up to. But it was anything but innocent. That'll do it.
Norm to the rescue. This ominous line kind of sets him off, and now he wants to figure out what happened to Vault 32. Feel like getting out of the house? Yes. So we decide we're going to escape to Vault 32 to keep our TV rating down as low as we possibly can with a show where we're cutting off fingers. Ah, yes. See? Here we go. Dead crops. Uh, vandalism. Uh, man impaled with a piece from a foosball table and, uh... <laughs> this is worse. But it's still somehow preferable. We know the truth, death to management, and a very dead overseer, so, uh, yeah, management is dead. It says it was open from the outside. No. They need a pit boy to open the door. They had one. Whose? The mom's. And the plot thickens! <laughs> Sadly, that's all the vault stuff we have for this episode, so now we have to talk about Lucy being sold off for ghoul vials at Super Duper Mart. Uh... Yes. Ghoul Dad is selling off Lucy for ghoul vials at Super Duper Mart, and hey, look, it's one of the first Mr. Handys we've seen. Oh, also, she gets a new finger. Mr. Handy has a drawer full of fingers, don't ask why. You need a perk in Fallout 3 to understand why, but that doesn't really matter because... I'm simply going to harvest your organs. Huh? Yeah, see? Tranquilizers suck. Now maybe you'll get your act together and actually pick up a real gun. Pick up a real gun. Pick up a real gun. Right, so obviously she's the main character. This isn't gonna work. And this whole place is run by these two Harold and Kumar wannabes. Apparently these two have a monopoly on the ghoul vial market. I don't know. Kick a saw blade in the face. Get it to cut you loose and then kill a robot with a defibrillator. I mean, it's not a real gun yet, but we're getting there. Snip, snip. Tell them what a Braxo does to the human body. If you got a clog that's full of muck, trust a Braxo draining fluid to, to get it unstuck. It's very poisonous. We are back to the syringer. We're back to the fucking syringer. I mean... I guess it's a good thing that we've gone from tranquilizer darts to basically Drano, but still. Her goody good act doesn't do her any favors though, because she also releases all the ghouls. There's nothing wrong with that, but uh, she also lets out the ferals. Who proceed to kill these two immediately. Very, very effectively, I might add. Like, wow, these guys were very underprepared for a containment breach. Martha. My name is Martha. Please. Please. Come on, I know there's someone in there. Talk to me. Oh. Finally. It took us four episodes, but we finally got an actual firearm. I may end up looking like you. I'll never be like you. Golden rule, motherfucker. What? What was that? Looked like an old person joke. So I guess Ghoul Dad owns the Super Duper Mart now, as he proceeds to steal all the ghoul vials and watch old Cooper Howard movies on holotape. Furthermore, this is a very weird shape for a holotape. I think it's like Format Wars. Oh, kind of like VHS versus Betamax, even though Laserdisc was clearly superior? Exactly. Ah, okay, I see. A really great episode, by the way. 
Only thing I found a bit odd was that we got absolutely no Brotherhood of Steel in this one. Maximus wasn't in this episode. So to make up for it, he's the first thing we see in episode five. Maximus and Thaddeus having a good old hoot and a holler around the burning barrel. That's his name, by the way, Thaddeus. Frankly, I'm surprised Maximus has had the suit on this long. Don't you have to eat? And I think he's starting to realize that because he finally lets his guard down and finally reveals his face. This does not go very well. <laughs> And the ungrateful son of a bitch leaves him there. In a powered down power armor suit. I didn't even know you were locked in the suit if it ran out of power. Though frankly, I also didn't know about the faceplate lifting up, so uh, we're learning all kinds of things about T-60 power armor today, aren't we? Power armor! Lucy stumbles across Maximus just in time to save him from a rad roach. Yes. She lets him out with the promise of rat away only for her to immediately collapse. Talking about power armor. A T-60, right? My army started using these after the Battle of Anchorage. I've seen these in old engineering manuals, but never in real life. And he's even got the tempered lining in this one, which is... Just what? Increased damage resistance? We'll come back to Lucy passing out from radiation poisoning later. Right now we need to go talk about Norm? Norm! Him and Tall Man discover a bunch of bodies outside the door to Vault 31. They've got blow torches, hammers, and clearly they were trying to get in. Anyway, we've run out of leads in this vault, so it's uh, time to run away for some reason. If anybody asks what we were, we'll have a heart attack. Where have you two been? We've been planting potatoes. Potatoes. Well, run along now. Wow. How do you bluff his way out of that one? Tall man is actually a Charisma 10 build. Huh. That explains everything. That's not the only thing going on in the vault today, though, because it's also election day. They gotta vote for a new overseer. And as if the conspiracies around Vault 31 weren't bad enough already... Everyone is voting for the lady from Vault 31. In fact, every overseer that they've ever had was from Vault 31. Now, I'm not saying that they're stealing our elections, but... They rigged it. Oh, wow, you're just gonna come out and say it, okay. Congratulations, Overseer. Thank you. My god. Tension is so thick you could cut it with that cake slicer. I know, right? Okay, the vault arc is getting really good, but we'll circle back to that and go back and see how Lucy is doing. And actually, we were supposed to circle back to the scene way earlier, but I've been doing some of these out of order. Sorry. I had no idea people lived in those vaults. What did you think was in them? Monsters. <laughs> That's what people say. Well, I mean, is he wrong? No. There, see? Coming straight from Mike, a product of Vault Tech itself. So, Maximus needs the head. Lucy has a tracker to the head. Lucy also needs help getting her dad back. These two come to an agreement that in exchange for the head, Lucy will get the Brotherhood's help in getting her dad back. Boom! We're moving the plot forward. You could say we're moving it forward to this bridge, which we have a standoff with these two for about an eternity on who's gonna cross first. 
Eventually, they decide that they can go at the same time, and this ends up being a bad decision for everybody. Interesting, very interesting. I'm starting to see it now. What's on your mind? Well, I wasn't sure about her gigantic eyes at first, but she's had that thousand yard stare a lot in this show, and it kind of works. Still need a break from it every now and then. Big eyes drive me crazy. Uh, let's see what Norm is doing. <laughs> Honestly, no. By all accounts, Fall 31 has more resources, better education system, and, you know, they got that phrase. When things look glum, vote 31. Also, it turns out Steph, the eye patch girl, is also from Vault 31. These Vault 31 people, they're everywhere. They're in the walls! He's in the goddamn wall! This wall fear is compounded when the new overseer comes and says they're gonna repopulate Vault 32. And they all go in there, and it's clean. No mess. No dead bodies. Nobody impaled with pieces of a foosball table. Overseer's terminal is still smashed, though. I guess we couldn't leave that tiny convenient bit of evidence find anything interesting great job cleaning up the raiders destroyed so much but not our spirits betty When my mother died, what happened to her pit boy? Bold move. Very bold move! It was buried with her. How are you so sure? Because I buried her myself. The fact that we're getting a conflict like this in a Fallout show is amazing. No guns, no machetes, no violence whatsoever. Just subtle passive aggressiveness and ominous undertones. I love it. This was a very exciting episode for the vault side of the show. I can't wait to see how the surface side of the show tries to compete. To oh! Whoa. Shady Sands, you say? Capital of the new California Republic? This could be really important. Well, if it makes you feel any better, it didn't work out. What do you mean by that, Brotherhood boy? Shit. Didn't see this coming. Everyone wants to save the world, they just... They disagree on how. I wonder if anyone survived. I did. Are you fucking kidding me?! The NCR exploded?! You're just gonna drop a bomb on it! NCR was probably always the best option for an ending in Fallout New Vegas, because, the, let's face it, no one willingly does a Legion ending. And the worst part is, New Vegas fans are gonna be pissy about this for months. Yeah, okay. This'll compete with the Vault arc going on. No problem. Yes, absolutely. You absolutely did manage to get my attention. 
Because you blew up the fucking NCR. Hey. Oh. All right, Maximus got shot earlier. We should probably do something about that. Thankfully, we actually have sane-minded individuals in our wastelanding party because the first place they go is a hospital. It's the hospital that fucking sucks, though, because it turns out it's a trap. It's a trap! But then it immediately turns out it's not a trap because it leads to a working, functional, and completely normal vault. Vault 4, specifically. Didn't see this coming. Neither did I. But you know what? It actually reminds me, you know who we haven't seen in a while? Oh. Hello there. Yep, it's me, Cooper Howard. Star of stage and screen. Episode 6 opens with this really cool 60s style promo for Vault Tech. He's trying to sell you vault space that you're probably not gonna need because the world probably isn't gonna end. And hey, look! Interracial couple. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just unusual that it would show up twice. Neat! And now you can be a hero too, by purchasing a residence in a vault tech vault today. Because if the worst should happen tomorrow, the world is gonna need Americans just like you. And Canadians, because remember, they annexed Canada in this universe. Yeah. Hey, what do you think happens when you call that number? Take. You happy? Fellas, are you happy? All right, Gary, I'm wrapped, right? Yes, sir. This episode is when we're gonna start getting a lot more pre war stuff. And I, for one, welcome it. The games never gave us an enormous glimpse into the pre war stuff when it comes to Fallout. It's all actually pretty interesting stuff. They even take a second to take a jab at T-45 power armor. What's tech? It's a defense contractor. Oh, I'm uh, very familiar with you guys. You designed the T-45 power armor. Your first of its kind. You know, I, I oversaw the, the rollout. You know, the design flaws were ridiculous, but they sure looked great. I wore the T-45 when we almost lost the great state of Alaska to the Reds. Those design flaws here has cost a lot of good men and women their lives. We get a look at the cars, the people, the architecture, and an inside look at the corporatization of America. Hey look, Matt Berry is in this show. We actually heard his voice earlier because he's also the voice of Mr. Handy. Which he's talking about here, actually. So my vocal rise to that spinning robot they sell to housewives and perverts. Guess how much they paid me for that. 10 million? No, I got 186 pre-tax. Maybe you could ask for more? Well, I did ask for more. And what did they say? My agent got them to throw in one of those robots. <laughs> what the fuck were they thinking every time I walk into my own house, my own voice saying, hello, sir, do you want to sit down? I mean, I'll admit, some people might be turned away by this. We're watching a show about an ultra-violent video game. But I think it works. I've said for a really long time that stuff like this needs breaks from the action, it needs pauses, we need space to breathe. This gives us a little bit of all of that. Not only that, but it's also keeping the story moving forward. We're getting backstory to what's happening now as we transition right over to Ghoul Dad. Who we also haven't seen in a while, by the way. He wasn't in the last episode. Ghoul Dad here spent episode 5 either passed out, drunk, or both, but he wakes up just in time to get kidnapped by the government. The government. Yeah, see? You probably thought I was joking about that. But before we get to that, we need to talk about vault life. Or, in this case, the awkward waiting for something to happen here. You wanna have sex? <laughs> what? You mean use my cock? Yeah. What is happening? I have no idea. Thankfully, this lady shows up in time to save us from this awkward, awkward conversation and pull the tooth out of Maximus's arm. Uh, yeah, tooth, not bullet. Some teeth for ammunition. Always finding new ways to kill each other out there, aren't they? 
And it turns out that these people are actually very nice. Even going so far as to recover their power armor. Oh, and we found his armor. Our surface foragers are bringing it back now. Oh, that's great. And that's not the only thing that's great. The people here are great, the food is great, the atmosphere is great, and holy shit, Cyclops Chris Parnell! Stay out of level 12, obviously. We'd prefer you not go there. Oh, and we only have one foosball table, so if you want to play, you gotta sign up. If there's no pencil on the sign-up sheet, please let me know. I do have pencils. So oh, this is weird, right? Extremely. Good. Just making sure. In fact, looking around, this is not an isolated incident. Yeah, okay, we're gonna step away from this and go back about 200 years to uh, the jacuzzi. And everything's all lovey-dovey until the Pip-Boy enters the relationship. Oh, come on. You've seen these around. Not on you, I haven't. You know, we, we, we've been sitting on this for the entire review, so I gotta ask, Mike, why are they silver in this show? Dark green makes it seem more like military equipment, while silver makes it seem more like jewelry, which visually connects it to the Apple Watch. I'm not sure that makes it better. And I think Cooper here is starting to realize it. So are the people around Cooper. This is Charlie. And he's got a little financial conspiracy to run by us. So the U.S. government has outsourced the survival of the human race to vault -Tec. <laughs> And vault -Tec is a private corporation that has the fiduciary responsibility to make money for its investors. And how does it make money? By selling vaults. That's called capitalism, Charlie. But they can't sell vaults if these peace negotiations go through. So vault -Tec has the fiduciary responsibility to make sure that it don't work out. Oh, yeah, how are they going to do that? I don't know. I mean, I've heard a lot of corporate conspiracies. The Boeing whistleblowers, anything related to crypto, but this is making a little too much sense. See, I think Cooper here is starting to look at the cracks in the facade, and that becomes fairly apparent during an awkward family dinner. Are those mandatory? What if I don't want to wear a blue jumpsuit? What if I want to wear a green one? So the bomb falls and you want to know about your wardrobe? No, I want to know about my freedom. I didn't go to war defending that freedom so that I could live in a cellar under the boot heel of Chairman Bud Askins. And while you were away at war, I stayed home. It's getting pretty awkward in here. Not as awkward as the scene earlier. Oh, no, no, believe me, nothing could compete with that scene. But things are okay for now. They hug and they make up as we transition over to the overseer's office on Vault 4 over 200 years later. Ooh, I grabbed a moldy one. But yeah, it still turns out these people are really nice. Overly nice. As a matter of fact, a little too convenient, except, you know, when they start talking about level 12. What's on level 12 and why can't we go there? We don't talk about that. Jeez, what's the matter with you? Sorry, I... I you should go now. I only wanted to... Goodbye, Goosey. Well, that's not ominous at all. What the heck is Maximus doing in the meantime? Stealing fusion cores. Wait, what? Actually, yeah, for reals. Remember that armor they said they were bringing in? Well, it's here. But Squire Shitsack stole the fusion core, and now we need a new one. But they managed to convince him to not do this thing in exchange for a look at... Vault Life. And mashed potatoes, give me the simple life. A cottage small is all I'm after. Not one that's spacious and wide. A house that rings with joy and laughter. Uh, yeah, there's even a gift basket and bathrobe involved. Personally, I'm wondering where they get fucking caviar over 200 years after the apocalypse. Lucy, on the other hand, finds herself going further and further down the rabbit hole as we encounter... The chalkboard that pissed off so many New Vegas fans. So, so many New Vegas fans. My 
God, they are still angry about it. So many message boards screaming out. Cursing the name of John Howard. Cursing the name of Todd fucking Howard. You see, the chalkboard here is fundamentally flawed. 2277 is five years before New Vegas, and that kind of set a lot of people off. But that's not when things exploded. It's just when things started going downhill. They had to go on social media and clarify this. So can we please stop screaming about this now? God damn New Vegas fans. Why can't you go play Outer Worlds and leave us all alone? So, anyway, turns out Vault 4 is full of survivors from Shady Sands. Every night they hold this really creepy candlelight vigil honoring those who died. And oh, oh, oh God, no, it's an orgy. Okay, okay. Gonna back away from that now. We're gonna talk about the government. It's spelled M-I-N-T. This is the government, apparently. Well, then you might want to hire a publicist. Oh, this is the first I'm hearing about this outfit. Turns out the government isn't the real government. They're just a protection racket under the command of, uh, this guy. He calls himself the president, but then again, there's only, like, five people here, and I don't know where two of them went. And we actually have a really good talk here. We even name drop Moldaver again, which is someone we have not talked about in a really long time. Not since we lost the head. Ghoul Dad here even takes the time to sew his finger back on after Lucy bit it off. <laughs> right before he uh, kills everybody in the room. I got one question for you, old buddy. Why? You have this picture on your wall. That's Moldaver. Why? That's not how I remember her at all. Cause you see, it turns out Moldaver is really, really old. And the plot thickens a bit more. Meanwhile, having witnessed a room full of naked people, Lucy decides it's time to get Mr. Power Armor involved. POWER ARMOR! Unfortunately, he's already been brainwashed by the caviar. I don't know where they get that. The bathrobe, the hot shower. Seriously, where do they get the caviar? So she goes down to level 12 to figure out what's going on once and for all. Only to discover a bunch of cryo tubes full of naked people and a video that I don't think we could show on YouTube. And then she gets caught immediately, and that's where the episode ends. <sighs> we have way too much we gotta censor here. Mike, what the heck is going on with this fault? Scientists subjected wastelanders to mutation experiments, including hybridizing humans with radiation-resistant species, leading to the creation of creatures such as gulpers. Oh. Okay, this is bad, probably. We'll have to wait on that for a while, though, because episode 7 opens with... These two, with NCR helmets. But not just these two, Ghoul Dad is in this too. You see, because it turns out these two brothers have a third brother that Ghoul Dad just blew his head off, and now he needs the location on Moldaver. After a little bit of schmoozing and shooting this guy in the shoulder, he figures out that she's at the observatory. The old. Los Angeles Observatory, specifically. You see, it turns out Moldaver is a pre-war disgraced scientist who was inventing cold fusion. Cold fucking fusion! How do you know my wife? My research company was acquired by her division. We were developing this kind of technology that's difficult to monetize. Cold fusion, infinite energy. That's what I was on the verge of achieving when Vault Tech swept in and bought up every company I'd ever worked for. What, every one of them? So, what are you, a millionaire communist? So, if I'm understanding this correctly, they bought up everything pertaining to Cold Fusion and then didn't do anything with it so that they could watch the world burn because, it, because that actually fit into their business model. Suspicious. 
very, very, very suspicious. So suspicious, in fact, that she hands him a listening device and says, please spy on your wife for me. I'm not a communist, Mr. Howard. That's just a dirty word they use to describe people who aren't insane. Hmm, not really sure about that one, lady. We know a giant robot that would disagree with you. Actually, he's in your universe. Death is a preferable alternative to communism. Meanwhile, 200 plus years later, back at the vault, the one where they were doing experiments on people. Do you have the slightest idea how little that narrows it down? Vault 4. The one where the scientists lured the Wastelanders in to perform tests on them. Now, what Mike failed to mention was that said Wastelanders decided to stage a revolution because fuck that noise. So, uh, turns out they don't actually experiment on people anymore. They're just weird. They still have to punish Lucy, though. Meanwhile, Maximus is still watching... W waterfalls? This is the third time we've seen that TV, and it's been waterfalls every time. Oh, but hey, I'm sure her punishment won't be that bad. I mean, how could the- Oh, hey, Chris Parnell's got a sword. You are hereby sentenced to death <laughs> by banishment to the surface! So, yeah, it turns out there is absolutely nothing sinister going on here at all. These people are actually really nice. They're just weird and slightly mutated. And X and CR, who apparently have an orgy every night. That's why we're giving you two weeks of supplies to take with you. Thank you, Kathy. After that, you are on your own, Goosey. And just one more thing before we uh, we leave this vault forever. I don't know where they're getting these things. My friend really likes it here. And he's a good person. He deserves to be somewhere nice and safe. Like this. Gonna stop you right there, Lucy. Uh, he kind of thought that you were about to be killed, so he's already stolen the fusion core and is about to tear this place up with power armor. POWER ARMOR! Too bad for those two weeks of supplies, I guess. This does lead to a rather awkward conversation, though, when he figures out that everything is fine, and these people are actually really nice, and they didn't do anything wrong. They do have to give the fusion core back, though, which means no more power armor. Oh, but at least they say thank you. And since we're being honest and nice and all, Maximus finally tells Lucy that he is in fact not Knight Titus, which is a lie we've been running this whole time. And with this revelation, Lucy does not push him away. In fact, she kind of asks him to move in with her. Do you want to come live with me in my vault? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. So, are these two like a thing now? Because if so, that is the third interracial couple we've had in this show. Again, nothing wrong with it. It's just weird that that popped up three times. Let's go find that head. Yeah, okay. We'll circle back to this. Thaddeus still has the head, by the way, and this is a character we haven't seen in a really long time. He's also not doing too good. Remember when Maximus crushed his foot with some power armor? Yeah. That didn't have consequences. So instead of lugging this giant golf bag around to reduce weight, he ditches that. And this dog that keeps following him around? 
he just kind of puts that in a Nuka Cola cooler over here. Asshole. It doesn't get much better for Thaddeus, actually, because look who it is! It's our old friend, the freaky deaky snake oil salesman who was fucking chickens. Unfortunately for him, Thaddeus didn't know about that part, so he literally trades the fusion core for medicine. Don't let this guy on the internet, because something tells me he'll fall for every single phishing scam under the sun. There's no way this stuff works, right? Oh shit! Oh shit! Ah, oh, thank you. Sure thing, buddy boy. Oh. What? What? What the fuck? I just want it on record. I was right on this one. I... <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I, I, I don't care if you were right. I just shut up. Meanwhile, back in Vault 33. They got food. And Norm is delivering said food. No! Delivering food to the dead people? What? Yeah. Turns out they're all dead. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do something like that. Oh, more death. I wish it would end. What did I tell you? Words have meaning. We never learn who did this. She probably did it. I wouldn't put it past her. People are gonna be upset when they hear about this. People like to have something to fuss about. <laughs> Don't say it. Like New Vegas fans! <laughs> Betty, which is her name, uses this as the perfect time to start assigning people to Vault 32. And I'm sorry, the fact that Norm is staying in 33, but Tall Man is going to 32? Way beyond coincidence. An eye patch lady who is from 31 is the new overseer. That's it, she knows. She has to know. She knows what you did, Norm. It's about time we started acting on it. What's he going to do? Something his character would never do at the beginning of this show. While everyone's immigrating over and everybody's distracted, especially Betty, he's gonna break into the Overseer's office, but he doesn't know the computer password. But this is the Fallout universe, so a simple hacking minigame will fix that. There, the Intervault communication system. He's gonna pose as Betty and talk to 31 so that he can get access to 31. He gains their trust, they open the door for him, and he steps inside. I'm so proud of him. You know what that is right there, Mike? That's character growth. Meanwhile, back before the bombs drop, Cooper here is struggling with the notion of spying on his wife. And he decides not to do it. Until later that night when he has to dig it out of the trash because he probably should absolutely spy on his wife. Why is he doing this? Because Cooper Howard really loves his dog. This is not a joke. No dogs in the hall, huh? And, I mean, let's be honest. Do you really need a better motive than that? That's why Cooper Ghoul Dad takes the time to rescue dog meat from that cooler at the gas station. I'm sorry, dog me, but you ain't him. By the way, this is the first time we're dropping that name. This is the newest incarnation of dog meat. Meanwhile, Thaddeus has met up with Fred Armisen, who's running a little radio station here, so that he could get in touch with the Brotherhood, who are now on their way here. Unfortunately, they're not fast enough because Lucy and Maximus have time to catch up with him, but fortunately for them, Thaddeus has really, really bad aim. God, I suck without a scope. How do you get that bad? He's playing Fallout 2 rules. 
Oh. Okay, um... So it turns out that stuff that the snake oil salesman gave him, which was apparently not snake oil. Yeah. He's been turned ghoulish. They'll kill me if they find out. What? Th this is good, no? The Brotherhood is the good guys? Uh, it's a complicated organization. Yep, it's true. So Maximus finally gets the head back and immediately gives it to Lucy and replaces it with a fake head so that Lucy can go find her dad. Because these two are officially a thing now. So that's our third interracial couple confirmed. Again, nothing wrong with it. It's just unusual that this keeps happening. Are we going to get canceled for bringing it up? I say no. I think it's good to bring attention to these things. This is the last time it comes up, by the way. We're on the final episode. Remember the town of Philly? Yeah. The Brotherhood took that over, for some reason. Probably needed a forward operating base or something along those lines. Either way, yeah, they're, they're able to find out right away that this isn't the real head, so they're about to blow his head off. I can get you the real head. Confess. Don't kill me and I can lead you to it. Maximus has broken quite a few rules here. He's already under suspicion for hurting his friend here. He's impersonated a Knight of the Brotherhood of Steel. Stolen power armor. POWER ARMOR! Which he lost, by the way. That's also not good. My injury was my own doing, not his. Please. Please, I know where the head is! For the sake of the Brotherhood, please listen to him. And this appeases the Elder. And he seems to appreciate the total honesty he's getting from these two characters now. How did Titus die? He died running. The Brotherhood has lost its way. See what I'm saying? We, want we get a really nice speech out of this guy about building a new world and all that. Meanwhile, Lucy has finally arrived at her destination. See? Pip-Boy says so. Griffith Observatory, which apparently now is the new headquarters of the NCR. Built on the tears and angry sweat of New Vegas fans. You never get tired of doing that, do you? No. Alright, now listen closely, there's a lot of story concentrated in the next few scenes. Cool Dad is pissed. Gul'dad is pissed because he had to spy on his wife. He wiretapped her Pip-Boy. It's also around now that we come face to face with Moldaver. Finally. Turns out she's not a raider. She is in fact leading the NCR now. All that aggression in episode one? That was a deep-seated hatred for vault Tech. Which, by the way, it's around now that Norm discovers the big secret. <laughs> Because Vault 31? It's not like the other two. It doesn't even have any residents. It's just got this little robo brain guy. Everyone else is in cryo tubes. So now we're starting to get more of an idea as to how Moldaver survived, but that's not all. Turns out we're all learning something crazy today because Lucy's dad is also pre war. And we learned this. Right around the same time that Cooper Howard discovers the main reason to be angry at his wife. How can you guarantee results? By dropping the bomb ourselves. Never before in all of the games and all of the media have they revealed who dropped the first bomb? This was a fucking curveball. And we know this show is canon. And we were hoping that this show would find some way to leave its mark on the Fallout franchise and, uh. 
I think we've done that pretty well. This all goes down during a really big executive meeting where vault Tech is trying to secure funding from some major organizations like Big Mountain and... Oh, hey, look, it's Mr. House! And a mysterious shadowy figure up on the balcony who definitely isn't part of the Enclave at all! And the revelations keep on coming because Norm figures out the true purpose of 32 and 33. So what's Vault 32 and 33? Just people to be controlled? What? Oh, when you put it like that, sounds downright morally questionable. They're our breeding pool. The ultimate expression of HRRD, genetically selected to breed with my buzz to create a class of super managers. People with positivity, people who make lemonade, people who will inherit the earth after we've wiped the surface clean. We wiped the surface clean. And then, and then, oh boy, it gets worse. You see, it turns out this head we've been hauling around this whole time, that tiny blue thing is actually a cold fusion reactor. But Moldaver needs codes in order to get it to work. Lucy's dad has the codes. Lucy's dad has been following the directive of wiping the surface clean. Because it turns out Lucy's mom, who is here, took Lucy out of the vault when she was young and stumbled across Shady Sands. Well, it was not blown up. And it gets worse. So much worse. You know when you go somewhere and you say, oh, there's a paradise over there. This does not coincide with her dad's whole wipe the surface clean initiative. Vault check dropped the first bomb. Who's to say they can't just drop another one? He did it. He blew up Shady Sands. This man killed... Uh, let's see, how many people did it say were on that billboard? Ooh, ouch! Nearly 35,000? Yeah, your dad's a mass murderer, Lucy! And all of this gets confirmed when he actually knows the code. Give her the code, Dad. Oh, but it gets worse. So much worse. That investor meeting? Yeah. All the corporations just go with the whole, we're gonna drop the bomb thing and start investing immediately. Vault Tech basically comes in and says, we're gonna let you rent out these vaults to run your social experiments. All that crap? All those experiments? All the big corporations were in on it, including Mr. House. And then, and then, the cherry on top. They say the line. This is our chance to make war obsolete. Because in our current societal configuration, which took shape without intentional guidance, we have friction we have conflict and we have war and war well war never changes <laughs> wow yeah. Wow. This was a lot. There is a lot going on here. And if the show ended here, it would be a masterpiece. But they said, fuck it, the Brotherhood is coming. We are going to end on a goddamn battle scene. 
because war never changes. And we gotta live up to that motto. We gotta get this on the Fallout 5 soundtrack, it would be SICK! Badass. This is badass. Look at the two guys with the flags going at it. This, this, this scene is fucking sick. And to top it all off, we haven't seen him in a while, we finally get another badass scene with Ghoul Dad. I bet that outfit makes y'all feel like a big man, don't it? Well, I know, cause, well, I used to wear one back in the day. There was only one problem with it. There was a flaw in the welding, just below the chest plate. I wonder if they fix that in this new model. I guess not. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. We, we're, we're done. It can't get any better than this. We're gonna transition back over to Lucy and her dad, who has procured power armor from a dead brotherhood guy who stumbled into the room. And hey, look, Maximus is back. Who Lucy immediately tells everything to. Now we have to kill Dad. Maximus gets knocked the fuck out, but Lucy pulls a gun on him. She's got that look in her eye. She's ready to fucking do it. Until Ghoul Dad comes in and totally steals the kill. Hey, you want another autograph, young Henry? Feo fuerte y famoso. Your daughter said her last name was McLean, Will. I just couldn't believe that it was THE McLean. Hell, this kid used to pick up my wife's dry cleaner. Now, I've waited over 200 years to ask somebody one question. Where's my fucking family? To which Henry says, fuck this, I'm out, and Ghoul Dad lets him go. Why? So he can lead them right to the people in charge, probably. War never changes. You look out at this wasteland, it looks like chaos. But there's always somebody behind the wheel. Cowboy speeches aside, which are awesome, by the way, he does offer Lucy an ultimatum. You want to know how I know your daddy, don't you? Let's just say that everything about your whole little world was decided over 200 years ago. Now you can stay here with him, but when his tin can soldier friends take this place, and they gonna take this place, they will kill you and everybody here. Or you could come meet your makers. Lucy takes him up on this offer. So now, Ghoul Dad, Lucy, and Dogmeat are working together. Maximus wakes up in time to watch Moldaver stumble through the door and finally turn on the cold fusion reactor and watch all the lights in the city turn on. Unfortunately for her, she's bleeding out. And then, all of his Brotherhood friends show up. What's out there, leader? You killed her. No, Dane. All hail Maximus! That shall be night hereafter! All hail Maximus! All hail Maximus! So he is declared Night Maximus! And now we have a whole smorgasbord of problems that we're gonna have to bring up in season two. Speaking of season two, one final nugget to top off this fantastic
fantastic show. <laughs> Vault Dad is in New Vegas. And we get more and more of those delicious New Vegas fanboy tears. You know, I wasn't sure about you going after the New Vegas fans. But they're being less than subtle about making them upset. That's not them trying to make them upset. They're just upset about everything. Even how good this show was. Fallout the TV series exceeded every single expectation I had. The first time I watched this, I could not believe someone managed to make a video game adaptation that was this good. The current offerings of video game adaptations range between terrible and great. So the main question is, is this on the Last of Us side or is it on the Halo side? It's on the Last of Us side. Absolutely, 100%. Actually, this might be better. It's only eight episodes, but that just means we can make better use of the budget. And with season two already confirmed, and some of the actors saying they are totally on board with making more of this, especially Walton, aka Ghoul Dad, things are looking real good. And I, for one, am 100% ready. So, uh, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is, watch the fucking show! This is the new best video game adaptation ever made. It has no right being this good, and I can't wait for more. And hey, I'm sure Mike would like to come by for another big, 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 big review of season two. What do you think? It would be an honor. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. You know, why don't you just stick around for the next one? We got a dumb movie lined up. I would, but I need to get back to my own universe. Ah, that's true. You have your own show. Well, until next time. See you on the other side. As for me, my name is Hunter, and this has been a Hunter Review. I'm back. Uh, uh, what? Uh. Uh, geez, Mike, you were gone for hours. I dozed off. Sorry about that. God, well, what was all of that about? I've been waiting for you. Friend needed my help. Brotherhood? Not really. He had me help him with a project. What's the project about? Mostly about war. Uh, war. Uh, you know what they say about war. War never changes. Thank you all so much for watching, and thank you all so much for your patience with this latest review. This has been the biggest, longest review in the entire show's history. It was a colossal undertaking, and it never would have gotten done without your folks' continued support, so thank you. If you guys would like to continue to help the show, you can check out our affiliate links below to greenmangaming.com. Get some fantastic deals on your favorite video games, including the Fallout franchise. And you can join me and the millions of other people also playing Fallout 76. You know those bogus... Raid Shadow Legends ads where they'll say, Oh yeah, you'll find me on the game. No, you will actually find me on Fallout 76 if you look hard enough. I live on the golf course, guys. If you don't want to spend any money whatsoever, consider checking out our other show, Matt's Mind. The playlist is down there as well. Matt's Mind is the longest-running Fallout YouTube series in the world, and it would mean so much if you guys would continue to support the show, because we're still making it. It's not going anywhere. Just like this show isn't going anywhere. We're already looking into starting our next review. We know what it's gonna be, and we hope to have it out by the end of the summer. Don't worry, it's not as massive as this. Thank you all so much for watching once again. Here's some credits, and I will. See you guys next time.
Oh, by the way, Norm is stuck in Vault 31. Bye!